Hi, I'm Maddie. And I'm Simon. And today we're going to be answering more of your questions. As always, you've been asking some amazing ones, so do keep them coming in. Yeah, they are really appreciated. So, the first one is from Ed D, who wants to know if any organism can live entirely without oxygen. Yeah, there are loads actually. So, um, single cell organisms such as bacteria and viruses are really good at doing it. They, you know, they live anaerobically. So, they gain energy through a process called fermentation, which is when they're breaking down sugars into um, acid and alcohol for energy. Right. So, it's kind of the same process as you turn like grapes into wine and yeah. apples into cider. <laughs> yeah. Always thinking of the booze. <laughs> In fact, Three species of Lorisiferin have just been found, yeah. well, gosh, three and a half kilometres down at the bottom of the that's Mediterranean. Sea. Yeah, that's very deep. They're pretty small, they're about a millimetre long. Yeah. But they kind of look like a jellyfish with mm -hmm. like a shell on. Yeah, right? yeah, and they do not need oxygen to breathe, live, reproduce. So there they are, just, they are living in an anoxic environment and just getting on completely fine. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So that's kind of exciting because if multicellular organisms can live on Earth yeah. without needing any oxygen at all throughout any of their life experiences yeah. yeah then it kind of makes you wonder like what yeah. could happen on yeah. other planets around the universe Ooh. that have got completely different atmospheres next question comes from bb topic who asks fantastic question are humans the only animal to go through the menopause yeah good question and no we're not killer yeah. whales and short finned Pilot whales do it too. They're the only other ones that have definitely been proved to go through it. Mm, it's, I mean, it's interesting. Why would you become infertile and stop producing eggs at the age of, you know, around 50, 60? If you then go on to live for, well, gosh, you know, 30, 40, 50 years. Yeah, it kind so, of feels like they're missing out on like an opportunity to produce more offspring. Mm. But actually, there is a benefit to it. It's known as the grandmother hypothesis. And the idea is that although an older lady who's no longer fertile, mm. she can no longer produce offspring. Mm -hmm. But what she can do is care for her children's offspring, yeah. her grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And so by doing that, she's actually mm -hmm. looking after her genetic line in the long term. Yeah. So kind of future-proofing and helping the family as a whole. Yeah, and she's passing on her life experience and yeah. skills. Yeah. And we are actually seeing this happen in killer whales. So killer whales can produce young until late into their 30s, but they then go and live for another you know, 40 years. And you can see that the grandmothers, you know, they, you know, they, they stay yeah. with their grandchildren, their offspring and they're able to pass on yeah. that life experience. Killer whales, they actually live in like really close-knit family yeah. groups. Sons and daughters, they stay mm. with their mother for life. Mm. And so like they develop those skills and, and mm. things and pass it all down. Yeah. And actually it's been proven that by doing that, by mm -hmm. staying with their mum, yeah. their chances of survival are massively increased, especially wow. for the boys. For the boys as yeah. well? Specifically for the boys, yeah. Well, there you go. The last question of the day comes from Adam Carr, who asks, do birds wee? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Why do we always get onto the subject of waste and poo? <laughs> I don't know. But to be honest, They're it, asking the questions. Yeah, all right. It's your fault. <laughs> but it's genuinely a really good question. Mm -hmm. So, humans, mm -hmm. we humans, get rid of um, nitrogen yeah. through uh, converting it to urea, yeah. which we then excrete when we we out. Yeah, exactly. But birds, they convert their excess nitrogen into uric acid, which is nowhere near as toxic as urea. And because it's not as toxic, it doesn't need to be diluted as much. Therefore, mm -hmm. the birds don't actually need to take on as much water. Mm -hmm. And crucially, that means it's much lighter. So they don't yeah. wait as much energy when they fly. I mean, it's a genius yeah. idea. And because they don't have this need for storage, they don't have a bladder. Um, instead, the urea just gets mushed up with all of the other wastes such as you know with that seed husks and it all just comes out together via the cloaca nice mm. so i hope that's answered that question mm. um do keep your questions coming in we love reading them and we will do our very best to answer them. Mm -hmm. see you next time and make sure to subscribe on earth unplugged bye the male giant australian cuttlefish are like walking billboards advertising themselves to the passing ladies. They have up to 200 pigment cells per square millimetre.